So for our first problem, uh, what if we have absolute value of 2x minus 1, close absolute value, plus 3, less than or equal to 6. The first thing you want to do before you do anything else is move everything other than this absolute value to the other side. So we want to get rid of the 3. How do we do that? By subtracting 3. On the left, you'll be left with 2x minus 1, less than or equal to, because we subtract 3, we get 0. 6 minus 3, when we do it to the right-hand side, is just going to give us 3. So then the next thing you ask yourself is, okay, now I have a problem that it looks like the ones we've done in the last section. Some absolute value of an expression less than or equal to a number. Now by now, I'm trying to, been ingrain it, I'm trying to ingrain it in your head, so when you see absolute value less than a number, you need to think that's an and. That's a line segment shaded region on the, um, on the number line. Of course, we're not using the number lines here, but when you see it where it's an absolute value less than a number, it's a line segment shaded region, and it's going to be uh, uh, basically an and kind of deal. So let's write it as such. It will be 2x minus 1 less than or equal to 3 and, right, and 2x minus 1 greater than or equal to negative 3. Because basically you bounded at plus 3 and minus 3, it has to be that shaded region between here, so it's going to be less than 3 or greater than the negative 3 here. And so all we do now is we solve both sides. Add 1 giving us 4, so we add 1 here, add 1 here, then we divide by 2. What's 4 divided by 2? It's 2. All right? Here, similar deal. Add 1. What is negative 3 plus 1? It's going to give you negative 2. And then x is greater than or equal to. What do you get when you take negative 2? Divide by positive 2, you get negative 1. So you have this joined by an and. So you could circle that, but since, since it's an and, what we're saying is, hey, it has to be greater than or equal to negative 1 and less than or equal to 2. So you write that as a compound inequality by saying x. Write your less than or equal to, less than or equal to, because both have equal signs. And you read it from the inside out. x greater than or equal to, what do we have, negative 1, and less than or equal to this one here, which is a positive 2. And that's what you would circle for your answer on your test. Okay, uh, x is less than or e uh, greater than or equal to negative 1, less than or equal to positive 2. And I know that you know how to graph that because we've done it about 45,000 times up until now. So that's basically what you do. We're doing over and over again. So here we have something similar to that. We have 7 minus 3 times the absolute value of 4x minus 7 greater than or equal to 4. So the same sort of thing. The very first thing you want to do is get rid of everything else except you want this absolute value by itself on the left-hand side. So the first thing you have to do is get rid of the 7 by subtracting 7. When you subtract 7 from the left, you'll just be left with negative 3 absolute value, 4x minus 7, greater than or equal to, subtract 7 means we subtract it from this side. What is 4 minus 7? 4 minus 7 is negative 3 on the right. Now this negative 3 is multiplied by this absolute value, so to kill it we have to divide by negative 3, but don't forget once we divide we have to flip the sign here. So when we divide by negative 3 on the left, we're going to be having 4x minus 7, but we have, then have to flip the direction of the inequality, and then we have negative 3 divided by negative 3, which is going to give us positive 1, because negative divided by negative is positive. So now we have it into the form of everything we saw before. Inequality, some, ine uh, I mean, sorry, some expression, some inequality, and a number. Now this one was, um, remember, it was an inequality less than a number. We said that it was an and. This is an inequality less than a number. That means this has to be less than one distance unit away from the origin. In other words, it's going to be between plus and minus one. Okay, between positive one, negative one. So that means it's an and as well, because it's an absolute value less than or equal to a number. So what we have is breaking it out, 4x minus 7 less than or equal to 1, and 4x minus 7 greater than or equal to what? Negative 1. Because this means it's going to be less than 1, this means it's going to be greater than negative 1, bounding it to being one distance unit away. And then we move the 7 over here, so we get 4x. What is 1 plus 7 is 8. And then we have x. What is 8 divided by 4? That's 2. All right. And then we have, of course, the and. Now let's move the 7 over here. Be 4x greater than or equal to. What is negative 1 plus 7? We have negative 1 plus 7. You're just going to get a positive 6 on the right. And then that means x is going to be greater than or equal to 6 over 4. 
which you know you can simplify fractions. So what is six divided by? When you divide by three on top and um, by two on top and bottom, uh, two times three is six, two times two is four. So you get three halves. And these are joined by an and. So both of them have to be true at the same time. So because it's an and, we can write it as a compound inequality, put x in the middle. We have equal signs under both inequalities, so we'll put left-hand arrows there and read it from the inside out. x is greater than or equal to 3 halves, and x is less than or equal to 2. So this defines a region. If we were to plot it, it would define a region. It would say x is going to be bigger than 3 halves, which is one and a half, basically, but it's also gonna be less than or equal to two. So it, it forms a line segment, which is what we know and type of inequalities are. They form line, line segment shaded regions in general on our number line. <clears throat> now let's do one where we have an or kind of arrangement, slightly more complicated than the other problems we've been doing before. What if we have four plus two times the absolute value. Now inside here we have something gnarly. It's 3t minus 5, all divided by 2, and that's greater than 5, right? But the same exact process applies. First, we want to get rid of the 4, then we want to get rid of the 2 so that we have only the, ab the absolute value on one side, and then we will decide at that point if it's a uh, if it's a uh, and or an or type of inequality. So, subtract 4, we're going to be left with 2 absolute value, 3t minus 5 over 2, greater than, now when I take the 4 and subtract it, 5 minus 4 is 1 on the right hand side. Now, we want to get rid of this 2 out front, it's multiplied, so we have to divide by 2. When we do that, we'll have 3t minus 5 over 2. When we divide by 2, it goes away, or it divides to 1. And then on the right, 1 divided by 2, we'll just leave it as 1 half. Whoops, we don't have an equal sign under this inequality. Sorry about that. So we now have, we have a new problem. If I had just given you this one instead of this one and said, hey, is this and or or, you would say, well, it's an expression that's in, it's in an absolute value and it has to be more than one half distance units away. That means it's going to be going to the right uh, off to infinity and also from the left on to infinity, more than one half distance unit from zero either direction. So it's an or. So I write it as an or, 3t minus 5 over 2 has to be greater than 1 half, or same thing, 3t minus 5 over 2, and here's the part where you have to think, greater than 1 half or less than negative 1 half, because I know it has to run off to infinity this way, and I know it has to run off to infinity the other way to be more than a half distance unit away. All right, so what we have is more than 1 half, less than negative 1 half. So then, we have to solve both of these inequalities separately. To solve this one, we have to kill the 2 in the bottom first. So we're going to multiply the left-hand side by 2, and that's going to cancel and get rid of the 2. The only thing we'll have left is 3t minus 5. On the right-hand side, we'll have 1 half, but we still have to multiply by 2. So we multiply the 2 on the left, that cancels it. The 2 on the right, we have to now do 3t minus 5 greater than what is 1 half of 2. It's just 1. So we can just write the number 1 down. Now we can move the 5 over by adding it. We'll add 5, that kills this guy. 1 plus 5 is 6. And now we'll get rid of the 3 by dividing 3. 6 divided by 3 is 2. So divide by 3, divide by 3, and you get t greater than 2. That's one half of the answer. And now we have to go do the similar thing over here. All right, now we have the same thing going on over here. We have to kill the 2 in the bottom, so we'll multiply the left by 2. That's going to cancel it. We'll have left 3t minus 5 less than negative 1 half times 2. Multiply left by 2, that, that cancels with the 2 in the bottom. Multiply the right hand by 2, and we'll have, what do you have here? Negative 1 half times 2 is negative 1. And then you have to move that 5 over by adding it. So you have 3t, add 5, that gives 0, so we'll have nothing there. And then negative 1 plus 5, negative 1 plus 5 is going to give you 4. And then when you get t by itself, you divide by t. So you have t less than 4 thirds. And these are joined by an or. So the answer is that t has to be greater than 2 or t has to be less than 4 thirds. t has to be greater than 2 or t has to be less than 4 thirds. One or the other, they both don't have to be true. Um, and so one of them is going off to the right to infinity and the other one's going to the left 
off to negative infinity, and in that region is where we have the solution of the original problem. Now our last problem in this class, in this lesson, is interesting because you're going to find the solution looks a little bit weird, but the problem itself is not so hard. You have 7 plus 5 absolute value of y less than or equal to 1 minus 3 absolute value of y. So here you have your variable in two different locations and then you have all kinds of stuff running around. So you have absolute values in two places. So all you need to do is move everything over to one side, move the numbers to the other side and solve it as usual. So what I want to do first is I want to first move the seven over here by subtracting seven. So I'll have a five absolute value of y left when I subtract seven. And then I will have one, um, well let's do it like this. When I subtract 7 on the right-hand side, I'm going to have 1 minus 7, because it's going to subtract from the 1, right? 1 minus 7 is negative 6. Then the 3 absolute value of y stays along. So I subtract 7 from the left, it disappears, subtract 7 from the right, and I get my negative 6. Everything else is the same. Now what I have to do is move this 3 times the absolute value of y over by adding. So what I'll have is 5 absolute value of y plus 3 absolute value of y less than or equal to negative 6. Make sure you understand, I add 3 absolute value of y, makes it 0, and then I add the same thing to the left. Now, same variable, same absolute value, 5 plus 3 is 8. Absolute value of y less than or equal to negative 6. So I don't like the 8 that's in front, so I'm going to divide by 8. So what I'm going to have here is absolute value of y less than or equal to negative 6 eighths. And of course I can divide by 2, divide by 2, so I'll have absolute value of y less than or equal to negative, divide by 2 is 3 fourths. So you have negative 3 fourths. So you get down to your answer and you try to figure out what does it mean, how do I proceed? And you start looking, about it, looking at it a little more deeply and you realize, wait a minute, I have an absolute value of my variable here. And I'm saying that it has to be less than or equal to a negative number. But absolute values never give you negative numbers. If I take the absolute value of 5, I get 5. If I take the absolute value of negative 10, I get positive 10. No matter what I put in here for y, I'm always going to get a positive number. I will never ever get a negative number, uh, ever. It's impossible. So even though I've done all the math right and I check it all, I realize that when I get to the final answer, there is no solution here. No solution. There are no values of y that can satisfy this. So it, what it means is there are no values of y that I can stick into my original inequality that would satisfy that either. No matter what I put in here, I will never satisfy the left-hand side being less than or equal to the right-hand side. In fact, if you put 0 here, 5 times 0 is 0, 3 times 0 is 0, 7 less than or equal to 1, that's false. So just by using one little point, you can see that, 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 there, that, that value does not satisfy the inequality. So sometimes when you get to the end, you get things that can never happen. So you have to read your answers, understand what they mean, uh, before you just circle them. Because sometimes you might want to circle this, but really the answer is no solution. So here we finished our lessons on inequalities, and we finished our, our, our first unit in Algebra 2 here where we've learned lots and lots of things and refreshed our memory on some things we may have forgotten and gotten our skills where they need to be to conquer Algebra 2 and beyond. The rest of the material in the class, all the subsequent lessons in Algebra, they're, they're not hard. They're just, you know, we have to take it one step at a time, make sure you understand everything before we move on to the next topic. So make sure you can do all of these problems. Don't just watch it and move on. Make sure you really can do them. Get your own paper. Do them yourself. And then as you continue your studies in algebra, you'll have the skills where they need to be so that it won't be frustrating. Uh, actually, it'll build your confidence and you'll do very well in your studies in algebra and calculus and so on and beyond. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.